Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland uh, and this short video, uh, another video in our series of videos dealing with correlation and regression and more importantly concentrating on cor correlation uh, is another example of how to undertake a correlation analysis or how to calculate the correlation coefficient. In this case we've got two continuous variables so the correlation coefficient we're going to calculate is the Pearson uh, product moment correlation coefficient. So we're going to calculate the Pearson, the Pearson, what's known as the Pearson product moment correlation correlation coefficient. Okay. Now you've probably seen in the in the textbooks and maybe across the web that there's many different variants of this particular formula. We're going to use one specific variant of the formula, which is a manipulation of the definition of the formula that's associated with the definition of a correlation, because it's actually easier to to do the calculations, and that's the only reason we're using it. But let's just have a look at the variants of the formula. So the different variants of the formula okay just to demystify a few things because I've heard so many times oh my god my lecturer doesn't use that formula and that causes major problems but actually there's no problems at all uh, by definition the correlation coefficient or by definition is defined to be equal to the covariance so it's equal to the covariance between the two variables okay uh, divided by uh, well it's the covariance between the two, two variables standardized based on the standard deviation of x and the standard deviation of y so it's the product of the standard deviation of x times the standard deviation of y now we haven't defined what the covariance is the standard deviation is pretty straightforward the standard where let me write it all down here where where the standard deviation s of x is equal to the difference the square distance between the x observations and its associated sample mean squared divided by the sample mean of x minus one and it's the square root of that okay and we get s of y by just actually changing this variable here to y and we have well let me write it down s of y is equal to the distance the square distance that the y observations are away from their associated sample mean squared divided by the sample size of y minus one okay and it's the square root of that particular thing these are just standard deviations so we have sx and sy and the covariance by definition the covariance is equal to i suppose it's the cross product of differences yeah so the covariance cov cov of x and y is equal to uh, it's equal to the sum of the differences between the x observations and their respected mean okay times the differences between the y observations and their respected mean so it's just like cross product going on uh, divided by n minus one which is the sample size minus one okay this is how many paired observations there is if that makes sense okay so that's actually our definition of covariance so if I want to calculate the correlation coefficient, I could calculate the covariance first of all, then I could calculate the standard deviation of x, and I could calculate the standard deviation of y, and with them three values I end up with the correlation coefficient. Uh, now what we could do is we could do a little bit of mathematical, uh, let's say a little bit of algebra on this, okay, and just let's say a little bit, bit of a transformation. I could feed this formula in here, and the two standard deviations in here, and I get another alternative, an alternative formula an alternative formula uh, that looks something like this it's it's that the correlation coefficient or is equal to the sum of the difference between the x's and their respective means times the y's and their respective means okay so it's actually the same as the top as the numerator and the covariance but this time it's divided by the sum of the x's minus the x bar squareds times the sum of the y's minus the y bar squareds and it's the square root of that actually you can probably see where this is coming from yeah when we divide in by these two factors here okay the n minus ones are going to cancel okay and we're left with the roots on top yeah so actually this is just a small little transformation of this but what we can also do is in this next formula is a formula that I like to use okay because it's a lot quicker okay to do the calculations on the table okay the formula that I like to use and it's only this is only my preference okay you can stick with the further formulas if you like them okay the alternative formula is okay well if we multiply out the brackets here and if we multiply out the brackets here and we do some transformations and uh, bring terms that are similar together don't forget this is a summation of a product yeah across 
iterated across all the observations, okay, we get the correlation coefficient R is equal to is equal to n the sample size times the sum of the x y's uh, minus the sum of the x's times the sum of the y's divided by n times the sum of the x squared minus the sum of the x's all to be squared as that term here times n times the sum of the y squared minus the sum of the y's all to be squared and it's the square root of that it looks an awful lot more complicated than what we've actually seen previously. It does, and I have to I, I have to admit that. It does look an awful lot more complicated, but it's actually easier to use, okay? So actually, what you can probably see is I need to know the sum of the x's. Oh, that's just the sum of this column here. I need to know the sum of the y's. Whoa, that's just the sum of that column here. I need to know the sum of the x squared. So I'm going to need to have an x squared column. Uh, I'm going to need to have a y squared column. So let's just put that in here. And I'm going to need to know the sum of the x, y. So I'm going to have to have this cross product column, if that makes sense. So what I'll do is I'll just use a ruler here to make this a little bit neater, okay? Yeah, so that...